Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, your weekly recap of Arizona real estate. Kind of a snoozer this week as we lead up to Memorial Day. There also was not a lot of economic news out there. And what news did come out, talking about the economy was better than expected. So that put some upward pressure on rates. But there was no CPI numbers, no job numbers. And in the market that we're in, when you see good news for the economy, it's bad news for rates. They go up. The opposite occurs if you see that unemployment is climbing, then you're going to start to see rates come down. So none of that happened this week. I don't know what's going to happen over the course of the next week, but I can tell you that our new listings, not new listings, our active listings have creeped up just a hair. Now, you've heard me talk that I think they're going to start to flatten out, if not decline as we get into summer. But what's driving this? Well, if I look at my seven-day moving average here, the top line is new listings coming on. That went down. but our new contracts went down as well. They went below 3,000. They've been rolling at about 3,200. So it's not that more people are listing their homes. It's that more less homes are being gobbled up. We're still at a respective amount of about 79%. So that doesn't add any downward pricing pressure yet. But it does tell you that uh, it's starting to soften. And this week was just a lead up to Memorial Day. We expect that to happen. If I take a look at new listings year to date, it kind of tells a little bit of a different story. I'm going to show that to you now in that it shows that we're at 41,207 compared to last year at 35,574. So from 35 to 41, so 6,000 more new listings this year than last year, not a big leap down from 2022 where year to date we had 47,000 listings. So will this New listings remain on this track and just kind of nudge slightly higher than last year, yet well below the year before. Well, that depends on a lot of different things. So we're just going to continue to watch that. Um, the other thing, I had a question from a, uh, a subscriber who said, hey, you never seem to show Gold Canyon. And I said, well, they don't break out Gold Canyon as much as you think they would in the Cromford market, uh, the Cromford report. But however, you can go in and do a little digging. You can find different things. Like here's the appreciation based on annual square foot. You can see that we're, what's it say there? It says uh, minus 3.2 compared to, compared to, let's see. I think they're comparing this to last year. Let me clear out all these other years. And there, yeah. So we're down versus last year in Gold Canyon. Last year at this time. Um, we were up 2.9 brothers a year before. So this is the annual appreciation rate. So nothing alarming, that's for sure. But you can also filter by city. If you have any questions for your city, uh, give me a holler. You can see the Chandler is also down average per square foot. Uh, but this does not mean that the market is sliding down. Chandler's actually doing quite well. There's some mortgage statistics that we saw this week as well nationally. And it's interesting that it says that uh, we owe $12.1 trillion on 84 million mortgages. And it says uh, mortgages represented 70.2% of consumer debt. That doesn't mean it's higher than what normal, what's normal. But uh, the average interest rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage last year was 6.79. And it says and it, it ranged from a low of 6.09 on February 2nd to a high of 7.79 in October 26. Americans originated 1.1 trillion in new mortgage debt the first three quarters of 23. 77.4 of that was issued to super prime borrowers with credit scores at least 720, while 3.6 was issued to some prime bor subprime borrowers at 3.6%. That's an interesting statistic and something to keep in mind because if you remember leading up to the crash of 2008, that number was not 3.6% when it came to subprime borrowers. It was practically 90%. So when you have that high of a number going out and things turn south, everybody falls off the cliff. But the loans that we've seen being written right now, 77.4% of them are to people with very good credit. Now, the one of the things that we need to watch that some people are nationally saying that uh, we need to watch as well. And that is our months of supply. And as we look this past week, you can see we've gone up slightly here to 2.4 months 
Now, they've been saying for a long time that four to six months is considered average. After what we've been living through, especially down in this area here, if we got to four months, I think we'd probably all consider that a crash, that everything would just be, there's way too many houses on the market. I've heard over the past couple of weeks, people comment, there's a lot of homes for sale on my block. And, you know, there really isn't, folks. It just seems that way because there haven't been any homes for sale out there for the past two, three years. So now all of a sudden you got two signs in your neighborhood and you're going, oh my goodness, I got all these homes for sale. Months of supply at 2.4, that's still pretty low. That's extremely low. But like I said, if we get up to four and six months, man, if we hit six months, everybody's going to panic. So who knows? Now sales, home builders, there's also another national article that came out that again, I compare to our market. And the headline says home builders are slashing prices to lure home buyers, but it may not be enough. But they're talking about new home sales in the U.S. Northeast dropped by nearly 21%. I have not seen the price cuts happen in our market yet. I don't know if they're coming because here's our annual sales right now, You new home sales year to date. Uh, so it compares each year to the month that we're in. You can see we're above last year, we're above the year before, and slightly below 2021 when it comes to new sales. So we're not dropping by 21%. And that's a key point to remember as you're looking at some of the articles. Now, we also talked this week about this program called Knock, and I'll put the link in the description below the interview that we did with uh, Knock, which is a new program uh, for bridge loans. It's not really new. Uh, but uh, we included a PDF and that explains what type of bridge loan this is. And what's a bridge loan? Well, you want to sell your house and you want to get another one. You found what you want, one that you want. Now you got to write it on a contingency. They make it easier. They use the equity in your current home. They give you an offer price. They give you the money. You can go put the down payment on the new home and then you can go back and sell your other home with some different options for you too. You can also, during that period, you've got six months to sell your home fix it up, remodel the kitchen, remodel the bathroom, improve the value of the home, sell it for more than what Knock offered you. And then you can take that profit, throw it back into your new house. So it's an interesting program, may not work for everybody, but I thought it was worth exploring. And so we, so we brought them on to discuss it. And as we go into this next week, don't expect a lot of hefty news going on. It's going to start slowing down for us here in the Phoenix market. It does in May. Uh, especially if you're a real estate agent holding open houses, you're already feeling the pinch. As soon as we get over 100 degrees, everybody, goes, oh, a lot of graduations going on this week. Um, after Memorial Day weekend, people tend to start leaving the area more and more to go up to the cooler parts of the state, like the White Mountains and Flagstaff, etc. So sales are going to naturally start to slow down. If you're thinking about listing your home, uh, that's not necessarily a bad time as it starts to pick up a little bit in June because our schools start, believe it or not, if you're from out of state, our schools start at the end of July. Ugh. But if you got little kiddos at home and you're running your air conditioning all the time, it's kind of nice to send them to the school and let them bump their air conditioning, right? We also get two weeks off in October called a fall break. So it's been working out pretty good. Um, it's really hot in July and August, especially August. And kids that are staying home and not in school are just, they're staying inside and they're playing video games. So might as well send them to school, right? Go learn something. That's what happens in our market. So we'll keep you posted here. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.